Hi folks, <clears throat> welcome to uh, Thursday, I forgot the day then, Thursday night's tutorial. Um, I'll make a start when a few more people come on, but I'll just explain what we're going to do tonight. So we're just going to make a nice little, very simple fabric crown. Um, we just need, you can make this actually out of a, a fat quarter. Um, the size I'm doing, this it depends on the size of the child, to be honest. Hi, Sandra. Hi, Erica. Um, if you if you pop on, say hello so I can see who's on. Um, I can see pictures, but I, can, and I don't see the names until people actually say hello. So, yeah. So, if you're coming on, say hello. Um, yeah, so, um, obviously, it depends on the size of the child. I will put... I've done a little paper pattern, um, and I'll take a photo of this, and I'll put it on later. Um, obviously your child or adult is going to be slightly different so if you start with this um, and then maybe measure it around their head and make some adjustments um, which I'll go through how to do in, in a minute when we're uh, when we're talking about the pattern so um, yeah so just um, fat quarter need some um, iron-on interfacing you can actually use, Erica, you've got um, the wadding. You could probably use the wadding for this, but you'll have to attach it to the, um, the you know, one side of the pieces um, so it doesn't move around. Um, so that will be fine. It'll just be more, it'll just stand up more. Um, but iron on in facing is perfect for this and um, some ribbon. That's all we need. Uh, Oh, excellent. That's great done. So it's it's really simple. We should be done in half an hour. And next week, um, you might be interested in this because I think what I might do next week is I'm going to do um, hopefully a little wand that can go with the crown. Um, now, I know they don't, they're not just for girls, these. I'm actually going to do tonight um, the new space fabric. That is gorgeous. It's amazing. So any little boy would love a little crown for his birthday. Um, also, these are great for um, getting ahead with Christmas. So you can make them all out of Christmas fabric. Um, I've still got Christmas fabric in stock. I've got loads more on pre-order, which should be here. Where are we now? June. Hopefully by the end of the month, if not early next month. So um, if you want to get ahead with that, then great. You can just use crowns for anything, really. Um, I'll pull you down... It is, it's gorgeous, Erica. It's really nice to work with as well. Let me get that there. Back a little bit. Um, it's 100% cotton. It's quite wide. I think it's a one, off the top of my head, I think it's a 145 centimetre or 140 centimetre wide. Um, excuse me scratching. I, oh, God. I don't know whether you can see. I've covered in bites. Uh, I'm a cub leader and we went to the uh, forest last night to do den building. And uh, stupidly, I forgot my um, my spray, and I'm covered. I've got it all over the top of my head as well. So if I if I'm itching, I do apologise. Um, what was I saying? So yeah, fabric. It's I think it's one forty centimetre wide, a uh, hundred percent cotton, and it's eight ninety nine. But it's really vibrant. The colours are gorgeous. So okay. So um, your fat quarter. Um, if you just cut it in half, I've already pre-cut the pattern uh, with this but I'll show you what to do and um, now only do one side I find it easier when you're doing especially with this because you've got all of the points and the you know not curves the points and all of these shapes rather than doing this on the um, on the interfacing as well I basically just put the interfacing on the other piece of the fabric and then sandwich it together then sew it then cut round it so I find that much easier so all I did w was, when you've worked your pattern out, so try and use mine. I think this is for about an age six, but again, it depends on the head. Um, make sure that if you've got a directional um, pattern, whereas this one hasn't really, it's not really directional, but I'm gonna take it this way. Uh, make sure that your top of your pattern is where the points are gonna go. I know it's common sense, but sometimes, you know, when you're doing things, you don't, um, you sometimes just forget to do that and then you'll cut it out upside down. What you can do as well with these is you can use two different pieces of fabric, so they're reversible as well. And then all I did was I pinned it down and then I just cut round the pattern. Um, 
and then just discarded that. I'm not going to do that with this piece because I've already done it there. So what I'm going to do with this piece now, so when you've cut it out, just put that to one side. This piece, I'm just going to stand up and get my little ironing board. Let me just see if that will move over a bit there. Okay. So I'm just going to press the interfacing on the back of this. Now, I don't know whether you can see there, there's a little bit of thread. So just make sure that there's nothing on the back of your, fa your fabric um, because you'll see that through. If your fabric's quite see-through, you will see it through the fabric. So just make sure all of that's out of the way. Now, your, your iron-on interfacing, if you rub it between your fingers, the one side will be smooth and the other side will be rough. It's the rough side that you're putting down onto the back of the fabric. So if you look there, that's the wrong side of the fabric. So we're actually sandwiching that, pressing that with the iron onto the back of the fabric. So I always just make sure that's all nicely smoothed out. And then I always go from the middle. That's a little bit too hot. Just let me turn that down a bit. From the middle to the outside. If you think your iron's a little bit too hot, just take it quickly. This iron is the different one from my one in work. The one in work was lovely. Just went on really easy. This is a different, this is a different violin that I'm using. It's not like the one I had for, what did we make with the iron on interfacing? Um, what did we do last week? I can't really remember. But that went on like a dream. This has been a bit more troublesome. But just take your time with it. You don't want to burn and melt it. You just want to make sure. I got this from Ella, who's the haberdasher's uh, shop next to me. And she did say it does take a little while for it to go on. So if you are doing this, just make sure that it's all pressed on. I think that should be fine. Okay. I'm just going to give that a little check and make sure it's on. Yeah, I have a love-hate relationship with um, interfacing. If you get a good one, it's great. If you get a bad one, it really, really messes up your project. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is find, again, make sure that you find the top and the bottom and then just sandwich. Get your bottom, um, your bottom level because all of this is going to be cut off. And then just pin it in place so it doesn't move. A couple of pins, don't need too many. Oh, hi, Christina. We're making, let me show you, a little crown, a little fabric crown. So um, just with the interfacing on the middle. So you're basically sandwiching that together. I've done a little pattern. That's probably for about an age six, so we will put that on later, but um, I'll explain when, um, actually, let me do that now in case I forget. So, um, this, what I've done with this pattern is I've just done this out of a normal A4 sheet, so then I've created the fold here, and if you measure your child, and then this, the, the central point, if you, if you fold your, um, if you've got a longer piece of, of, um, I want to say paper if you've got a longer piece of paper fold it if not just make sure that you've got your fold um little diagram there so you know that's the fold and then this point to the bottom there need for it for about an age six needs to be approximately 15 centimeters so just make sure that you do that 15 centimeters and then these um these points here um, are about 10 centimetres apart for an age six. So I then measured from this point to this point, and that was 11 and a half. So if you do from here, from the fold to this side here, five centimetres, and then make sure that that is, and then if you measure from there to here, five centimetres, and here to here, five centimetres, you can then use a ruler and just make 
just mark it there and you know that this then is your point and then when you mark it again you do your five centimeters which is half your ten and then you you make you you just mark it here like it works i have to be careful with this ruler because there's actually a that that's where it starts there so i always think that's five but it's actually six okay so that needs to be there so and then just mark it there and then when you've done your 15 centimeters you know that's your point there so if i put this on later um hopefully you'll get to grasp that but just basically get a piece of paper it doesn't have to be points either you can do waves you can do a high point here smaller point a high point you know just have a play with it really just um it's it's all in the fun really of something a bit uh personal for them and um, you just need to make sure that it doesn't reach all around their head because you want to tie the ribbon on so the ribbon is there for as they grow you can just open it up a little bit so then you get a bit more wear out of it then you see and also that you know you've, there's a little bit of leeway there if you get it wrong okay so hopefully i've explained that well and um, this one and a half centimeters here becomes the seam there so as you can see it's actually a finished dip in the point there so okay we'll move back onto this now okay so all i'm going to do now is i'm going to stitch around here but to help you you might want to um if you use a ruler let me move that out of the way you can actually just mark your stitch line if that will help you because you're going up and down, up and down a few peaks. And again, like most things that I do, if it's a little bit out, don't worry. If you are, we're doing about a half inch seam here. Quarter inch seam, sorry, not half inch seam. I'm, I'm obsessed with half, half inch seams. Um, if, um, yeah, we're doing about a quarter of an inch seam. I mean, I'm not even measuring that. I'm kind of looking at that and eyeballing it to be honest so you could do that all the way along and then that will give you a guide when you're sewing which will be really helpful when it's under the machine because when you uh, come to the the peaks and the troughs you want to make sure that you're on the point because it will show when um it will show when you're actually you know when it's all finished it you know if you're a few millimeters out on one side and then a few millimeters out that side this will look a lot bigger than the next one so all i'm going to do is i'm going to stitch along that line i'm going to start here and i'm going to back tack there come up to this point make sure my needle is down lift my foot up turn it and then carry on to this point and then needle needle down there again foot up and turn it so you're kind of just moving it and moving it like this now i've got contrasting oh, what's wrong with my brain today i've got matching thread on not contrasting thread so just pop it under now again make sure that it's right sides together you've got your interfacing underneath and then just i'm on about a stitch i'm going to put that on a three and a half which is pretty standard really um just a little back tack and then just come to the bit where your mark is lift your foot up my needle's already down anyway and then just carry on sewing now that's great because it gives you a good guide to where you want to be and if you've got uh waves or you've got um do one more there or you've got different shapes just maybe draw all along but it will help especially if you're a beginner and you're not really um confident with your straight lines this is actually putting me off because i'm not, i'm trying to sew on the straight lines here whereas normally i would just sew it one more i think so it's fairly simple this quite methodical you just keep sewing keep sewing you can make these for adults as well and can you imagine if you all had matching crowns for christmas at the christmas dinner that would be uh that would be lovely or if it's someone's birthday or you could even make um out of the birthday fabric i had last week 
um, which I've got in stock. You could make you could make a birthday crown, and then somebody could wear it on their birthday, and you could start a little tradition. Okay, and I've had done a back tack on the end there, which is obviously just going backwards, forwards, and the reverse on the machine. So I'm going to take those pins out so I don't scratch myself. And then I just find it easier. Um, rather than trying to cut the interfacing out and then trying to um, attach that on with the iron, um, you know, it just I find it easier to do it this way because you've got you've got to cut this. I'm just going to cut that end off there. You've got to cut this anyway when you're doing it, so you may as well just. This is so much easier now. Just cutting round it, and all I'm doing is cutting round this pattern that I've already done here so now the next bit is fairly important for when you're turning it through and you need to be very careful with your scissors try and have some good control over your scissors just trim that bit off there okay so at each if I do it this way, then you can see where it is there. So at each point here, the down point, you need to snip into it right up to your um, to your stitch. Now, if you see this here, see that doesn't open, but when you snip into it, it opens. So when you turn it through, it gives you a nice crisp turn through there. You wouldn't be able to turn it through otherwise. If I try and push that through there, See the way it's all scrunched up there? It's not opening. So if you snip into that on any corner when you're sewing, that will really help. Now just be careful. If you do go through your stitches, just go over it again and go slightly further down. Also do the corners here. That needs to be open as well. Okay, and there's two ways of turning it through. You can either trim off all around it and then turn it through and use your poker to poke it out or you can use your turn it through again use your thumb press it that way use your other thumb press it that way and then make sure your nail is on that and poke it through and you get a nice crisp finish I'm going to actually trim these, I think. Depends how thick your fabric is. Try not to go too close to your stitching. You don't want to cut that off and then have to re-sew it. Okay. And then just turn them all through. Just poke them through with your fingers. It's gorgeous, this fabric. I've made some bottle bags out of this actually and I'm going to make some dungarees uh, at the weekend I think. Okay so just poke in gently you don't want to poke through and then we're going to press it. Okay I'm getting on the board again. Now can you see this let me just I need to keep my eye on this actually okay so all i'm going to do first of all is i'm just going to press these these points here now this end bit you need to poke it out and um mind your fingers when you're doing this but just press that bit there and if you've poked all of those corners out you should be able to just press right over that and then again with the other side because we've snipped into that, that's given us a nice crisp finish there. Now, the easiest way now to do the bottom, I turn it this way. The side that's got the interfacing on, if you turn it up about half an inch, again, not specific measurements, but about half an inch will be enough. And just press it up. And you can either do the same with this, but sometimes what I like to do is if you turn it over and then just turn that back over on itself. So see the folded bit is underneath. 
fold that back on itself and then press that if you use your fingers to feel where the edge of this is as you're running it up with the iron when you do that that is level there and it's a nice because you've done a nice straight line there that's a nice straight line for both of them I'll just give that another little press and then the ends again I think pre pressing I try and do this when I'm um I'm doing a bit of a sewing tutorial because I think rather than getting that under the machine and trying to turn it and pin it and everything your hands are everywhere and it's a bit of a struggle so I think sometimes if you can pre-press um it's so much easier so now all we need to do I'm going to open that there if you turn where that see where that snip is there if you turn that in if you grab a pin this will help just to hold that in place there and then go to the other side and do the same and then when you turn it down like that take pin out just make sure that is level there and then press over it hopefully you got that I'll do it again on this side you can what you could do to help you could turn this this way press it that way and then that gives you a bit of a fold so when you do this that's much easier just poke that corner up there it's a little bit fiddly but just good practice with that and then you don't need the pin so much there and just press that so all i'm doing is boxing those corners off really and that's basically it we just need to top stitch it now so you can either top stitch all of this or just go around the corners i think i'm just going to go around the corners on this now <laughs> here's one great reason to be a hoarder i um i'm not even sure where this ribbon come from but i've had it for years and i actually think that looks amazing with the um with the planets with the orange so i'm just going to cut that in half and then if you let me grab a couple of pins if you about halfway up again just random measurements you don't need to measure too much but make sure it's in quite quite far because you don't want that to be here and then for it to fray and pop out so about an inch in and then pin it if you pin it horizontally if you do by accident go over that on the machine you won't break your needle hopefully turn it around the other way and do the same on that side just lift that edge up and about an inch in if you want to measure that if you want it to be spot on then um then do measure i am i've just eyeballed that and i think i'm quite happy with that so i'm going to move the ironing board so when you top stitch that in um, that then will catch the ribbon in so all I'm going to do now is I'm going to start <clears throat> on this side and from this last point here I'm going to back tack now it is quite thick there make sure that everything use your scissors to poke up and make sure that all your seam allowance is nicely out of the way so I'm going to back tack here and when I come to the ribbon I'm actually going to give a little back tack there as well yeah of course Christina I'll put that on uh, as soon as I've finished this I'll put it on I mean obviously measurements it's difficult because if you've got a two-year-old you've got an eight-year-old the measurements are going to be slightly different but if you play around yourself with a paper pattern you know if you start with if you start with this um these measurements let me show you if you start with those measurements first um and see how that comes out um then you know you can just um once you've made a a template for your child you can make many of them then okay so i'm just going to little back tack nice and slow because it is thick there and i'm just going to take well i'm going to go as far up to that pin 
because I want to actually sew onto the um, the ribbon before I take the pin out so I know that that ribbon's not going to come out and then just a little back tack and then just right across the bottom straight as you can I mean you can do a zigzag along there actually you know just play with it whatever you want to do now my pin is upside down there so I'm going to go as far to the ribbon and then I'm just going to lift my foot up because my pin's underneath and I'm going to try and get that pin out another back tack over the ribbon just to give it a bit of strength because we all know what kids are like they all do like to uh, pull things around and that is it basically I'm just going to neaten up the edges of that ribbon there in fact what I'm going to do let me just neaten that first because you don't want too many long um long bits of string or ribbon where kids are concerned so just tie that in a bow and it doesn't need to be too long so once you've got that in a bow a decent size bow so you know you can open it a little bit when the child grows a little bit and then just trim it right the way down so you've not got any trailing um you've always got to think ahead with kids and think about what they're going to do and there you go that is it nice little crown so hopefully you enjoyed that let me pull that back up it's quite a cute little idea actually um let me try a little put it on it's a bit small for my head i've got a big head but again i'm an adult so this is a for a child size you can play with the depth as well if you want if you want that a bit narrower it doesn't have to be that deep um you can have it so it's quite slim. That's quite a nice you look at that as well. You know, so again, play with the measurements. Just now, when you've got the template, um, excuse me, let me just shut the window. Oh, it's next door's duck. Um, as soon, once you've got the template, you can just play with it and, and just have a bit of fun, really. So hopefully you enjoyed that. And I will do the wand next week, which will go with that. Might be a bit of glue in with that, actually. So if you've got a glue gun, that'd be great. If not, um, you can hand sew things. So I'll talk you through that. So, yeah, so that's great. Um, I don't think there's anything to tell you. Um, yeah, I've pre-ordered my Christmas stuff. I know it's only June, but if you're making to sell, obviously, you need to get onto that. And if you're making for gifts, um, Halloween, oh, I've got some more lovely things. Um, oh, you're welcome, Dawn. I hope you... Um, when you do that dawn send me a photo it'd be lovely to see them but such a nice little thing what's that taken half an hour so um yeah really lovely and out of a fat quarter which is marvelous okay so um yeah i'll see you next week take care bye